Now, President Turu Kenyatta has rejected the Finance Bill 2018, which Kenyans had keenly been waiting for. The President's rejection of the bill now puts to rest the ongoing stalemate over the 16% VAT on fuel. He received the bill for assent from National Assembly Speaker Justin Muturi on Thursday. Now, in a Gazette notice, the Speaker has since called members of Parliament for special sitting next uh, Tuesday and Thursday to discuss the development. The 16% VAT on petroleum products was imposed on September 1st, resulting into a sharp increase in fuel prices. Now, the introduction of the charge has seen fuel prices rise to 130 shillings per litre for petrol and almost 100 shillings for kerosene. The mid-month review by ERC is due on Friday. Now, let's take a look at the Gazette notice by the Speaker of National Assembly, that is Justin Muturi and of course it is that there shall be a special sitting of the National Assembly that is on Tuesday and uh, Thursday that on Tuesday the 18th um, uh, commencing at 2 30 p.m. and on Thursday the 20th of September of course, our parliament will be having a special sitting just to try and discuss the way forward after President Uhuru Kenyatta rejected the bill. So will members of parliament probably reduce the 16% to 12% or will they probably, you know, look at the recommendations by President Uhuru Kenyatta, probably reject those recommendations and try to raise the two-thirds majority and should they raise the two-thirds majority and pass the bill the way it was presented to uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta to have of the 16% VAT uh, bill implemented in 2020, then it means it autom automatically becomes the bill that if only they raise two-thirds majority. So it means the bill will not have to go back to President Uhuru Kenyatta. So this was the Gazette notice that was uh, published uh, and uh, of course it is that members of the of, uh, members of parliament are expected uh, to um, have a sitting on Tuesday the 18th of September at 2.30 p.m. and of course, on Thursday, the 20th of September at 9.30 a.m. and at 2.30 p.m. for the purpose of um, the bill that uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta rejected. So right now, I'd like us to have a phone conversation concerning the VAT bill with uh, Khan Sachu. He's a CEO, uh, Rich Management, and, and also an economist, just to try and understand uh, uh, what the VAT bill entails after the president rejected it. Mr. Sachu, good morning, and uh, good thank morning. you so much for joining us here on KT News Center. What is the way forward now that the president has rejected the bill instead of signing it? So look, you know, the, the, we've got to look beyond this, uh, uh, this political scenario right now. And we've got to ask ourselves, you know, we're overspending. We're not raising enough revenue. And it is just simply impossible for the president not to allow this VAT increase to go through. The finances absolutely need the increase in revenue. I know it's about three quarters of a billion dollars, and I'm afraid, but come what may, he's going to have to deploy his political capital in Parliament. He's going to have to crack the whip because really we've run out of options, and that is the reality that we can't run away from. The parliamentarians, of course, were a little bit slow off the mark and uh, 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 very late in the day came to the problem but the problem is beyond Parliament. We have a pro with our issue right now is we, are, we have maxed out the credit card. We've got to look for more income. In some ways, this VAT uh, tax is a democratic tax. People can't avoid it. Everybody, rich and poor, is going to have to pay it. But we've run out of options. Uh, if we don't raise it from VAT, we're going to have to find it somewhere else. And frankly, we don't have the time because our, our run rate now is, is negative every single month. So either we cut expenditure very, very sharply, and if we don't cut it, we'll ha we might be forced to be cutting it in a few months down the road, or, or alternatively, we raise revenue. And this goes some way to raising that revenue, but the shortfall is in the billions of dollars.
Tresachu, um, you're saying that you've run out of time and the other option is probably just to implement the 16% VAT. What is the other option that the country has now apart from cutting the expenditure and also uh, probably just um, in implementing this VAT percent? What is the other option that the country has for now? Because the president is torn in between listening to the cry of Kenyans in terms of the cost of living and also, um, also listening to IMF. So, look, you know, I, of course, sympathize. The cost of living has gone up considerably, and anyone who's actually going in supermarkets like I do, it, it, I, I, I'm suffering sticker shock. You know, what I'm spending compared to what I was spending for the same thing six months ago is not running at 4 or 5% or whatever the official inflation rate is, is implying. It feels much, much higher. So, yes, I understand we all feel worse off top to bottom. But the problem is that, you know, our, our, our economic policy, the, the, the chickens are coming home to roost. I mean, we have borrowed huge amounts of money. Our return on our investments is, is tiny. I mean, just have a look at, for example, how much money went into the Galana project and what the return has been. Each bag of maize costs 20,000 shillings. This is symptomatic of our spending. So we've got to decide. Do we cut back on spending? Are we getting sufficient value for money? Or, or do we continue to raise taxes on people? And that, that is the equation that we're looking at. And it, frankly, even with this increase in VAT, we are still short. We've got to find money from elsewhere. And then on top of that, we've fallen out, it seems, with the IMF. The IMF facility was really important in terms of signaling People all around the world have bought our bonds, and they got comfort from the fact that we were uh, in a program with the IMF, and that meant our borrowing costs stayed low. Today, it's going to be very difficult to go back to the euro bond market to draw down more cash, if not impossible. So we're really looking, we're running at top speed against a wall. And it seems that, you know, so far, we have not worked out how we're going to avoid smashing our head into it. Mr. Sachu, what if members of parliament decide to probably do things, decide to reduce the VAT from 16% to 12%? And what if they decide also to make recommendations that um, let's increase taxes on other products? Can that be the best way forward? So basically, if we think about it, what we've got to do, the government is probably short of about $3 billion dollars. Um, over the next 12 months. The VAT raises them $750 million. We've still got to find about $2.25 billion from somewhere. So they're going to be raising taxes come what may. And whatever they might have to say, they're going to have to find money in addition to the 16%. So if you then start cutting the 16 and you go for 12, you've got to add in more money that you're going to have to find from somewhere. And the way I look at it in economics is there's a Laffer curve. A Laffer curve is when people feel they're being taxed too much and then you get massive tax avoidance, you get all kinds of problems. And we're reaching that threshold and it's a balancing act. And I think unfortunately, the thing we've all got to look at now is our expenditure. We are spending too much and we've got to bring it under control. And if we don't bring it under control, we will lose control, our parliament, ourselves, of our ability to change it. It will be forced upon us. And, and we can see this happening in other countries. I mean, in Zambia, similar story. Bond deals have gone crazy. They can't borrow from the markets, horrible stories coming out about collateral like the equivalent of KBC being grabbed by their creditors. We've got to deal with the situation. We've got to deal with it in a mature manner, and we've got to get on top of it. But at the moment, the direction of travel is not the right one. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ali Khan Sachu, the CEO of REACH and is also an economist. Just uh, talking to us about the decision by the president to reject the 16% VAT uh, that is last night. And of course, members of parliament are expected to have a special sitting next week on uh, Tuesday and Thursday. Now, from that, I'd like us to cross over to parliament. And uh, so the bill is back to parliament. And so essentially, all eyes will be on parliament. And uh, I'd like us to speak to uh, Patrick Amimo from our city centre studios on what's next for Parliament. 
and the options available for Parliament, including uh, the, the vetting, the decision of the President. Um, Amimo, thank you so much for joining us here on KT News Center. So members of Parliament are supposed to meet on Tuesday and Thursday next week. What do you think uh, members of Parliament will do? Will they probably ignore the President's recommendation and raise a two-thirds uh, majority and just have the bill pass the way it is? It's a very interesting development uh, since uh, uh, Parliament, uh, the, especially the National Assembly, uh, did pass this particular financial bill on August 31st before they went on recess. Two weeks down the line, that bill had not reached the President's desk. And we saw yesterday uh, the Minority Leader John Badi tried to criticize the parliamentary leadership led by the Speaker, uh, just Muturi, for trying to delay that deal, I mean, that bill to, uh, getting to State House. And this, according to him, was like Parliament was trying to play or get into bed with the executive, a matter he said was very, very uh, serious given that uh, Kenyans had raised concerns about uh, the VAT Act, uh, whose uh, uh, implementation, especially on the fuel levy, where petroleum products are going to be levied at 16%, has caused uh, uproar across the country. Uh, so after Mbadi afternoon, he uh, did address the media. We saw uh, the speaker in the afternoon, uh, in the evening, uh, take that. Uh, bill uh, uh, to the president for assent. Uh, but uh Within that short period, we also saw communication from the uh, president's, uh, president's uh, uh, communication unit that uh, there was uh, to be, I mean, we, we saw a, a gazette notice to the effect that uh, a special sitting had been uh, had been arranged. Some, uh, these things were moving very, very fast because uh, that evening it's when the president uh, received that bill. Then uh, we saw that particular very evening again, a gazette notice has, has already been published. So it's something that uh, apparently it appears uh, the government was... Um, was just holding to and just trying to see how Kenyans out there were reacting towards that finance bill. And now that the president has rejected that bill, it means that he has to give reasons on why he could not sign it uh, into, into law as many Kenyans expected. Uh, so that uh, Because in that provision there was an idea to suspend uh, implementation of that uh, VAT uh, 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 levy on fuel at 16 percent to 2020 and that's something that it caused is it caused an uproar and kenyans were all eyes were on the president to maybe append his signature to that bill so that uh, they are at least that burden is let off their their shoulders but uh, what the president has done with rejecting that bill uh, it means that kenyans will continue paying uh, vat on fuel products at 16 percent so the kenyans out there you will have to persevere as we wait to see the action from parliament but uh, what happens is that as the house convinced uh, uh, on Tuesday next week. Uh, it is a special sitting. They love to look at, uh, at, at that particular bill and the reasons why the president could not uh, send to it uh, because he'll give reasons on why he feels that, uh, uh, that he could not sign that bill into law as it is. And remember, when members of parliament were trying to uh, scrutinize that particular bill, there are certain provisions which they, they did not, uh, they, they amended, especially uh, there was something to do with um, that idea, especially like uh, on the housing up, uh, uh, depart, uh, uh, at least to have a, a, a housing authority where the president is, which is one of his uh, big four uh, agenda, is that uh, the, he wants to deliver 500,000 500, uh, units by in the next five years. It's a matter that uh, members rejected because there was, uh, in that particular provision, the way Treasury wanted was to raid uh, uh, employees' pockets and those, those of, em of employers where at least an employee was to surrender 0.5 percent of his monthly salary and the employer was to top up with uh, a similar amount uh, which was coming up to a minimum of about, uh, at, which was to pegged to a minimum of 5,000 which was to be contributed monthly, but apparently the government or through the housing, uh, the, the Department of Housing did not have an idea on how these funds would be utilized and or how these people who are contributing to that particular scheme will benefit. So such money, such money released to such a, a clueless venture is a very dangerous method to go, way to go, and that's why uh, members of parliament decided to reject that particular provision. There is a provision also that companies that were making over half uh, 500 million shillings in profit were to surrender 35 percent of that uh, of that profit to government as a way of uh, generating its revenue. The reason, apart from these uh, uh, these uh, tax, there are also accessible accessible duties that uh, Kenyans will be paying uh, once that law uh, uh, that bill comes into place. And this might affect uh, very very uh, other uh, other basic commodities, things to do with food, water, uh, juice, um, and also maybe the contributions people make to to to, 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 uh, to the uh, to 
uh, cooperate movement through the circles. It is something also to do with uh, the, the mobile money transfer. We'll see it reviewed. Uh, it, it will shoot up because uh, the, 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 it was a proposal to increase uh, that tax by 2%. And we saw that in July uh, this year, we saw uh, tel telcos, uh, uh, companies increasing uh, uh, that money, uh, uh, especially that, uh, that is charged for Kenyans uh, doing money transaction through mobile telephony. So it means if that be also, if that, um, if that uh, uh, bill, uh, if that idea to have, uh, to levy those transfers at uh, 2% comes into law, then Kenyans, you are expected to dip, dig deeper into your pocket for that money transfer. And the reason why the government is eyeing especially money mobile transfer is that uh, last year we saw 3 trillion shillings was transacted through mobile transfer. And the government thinks that uh, if it uh, if it can get at least 10% of this particular, or 12% of this particular money, then it will go a long way in boosting its uh, budget provisions. But then there is a catch here. Kenyans are concerned that the government is doing little effort to fight corruption because annually it's estimated that uh, 650 billion shillings is lost through corruption and the government is doing nothing to ensure that uh, those, uh, uh, those, uh, those uh, loopholes are, are sealed and also those uh, big fish on those engaging in malpractices and embezzling uh, people's funds and looting it left, right, and center are charged and or uh, their assets forfeited. So Kenyans think that uh, the government is not doing enough and they feel that uh, whatever little they, they are making is also lo being looted. That's why there is a hue and cry out there. And also we've seen the clergy yesterday, the clergy came out and said the government also must look at it and stop this idea of borrowing uh, uh, this, its appetite for, uh, for foreign loans because currently what we are doing is that we are borrowing this money and we are paying at commercial rates because uh, Kenya, we decided to be a middle income income country and when when we decided to be, to be to be a middle income country it means we cannot uh, benefit from debt waivers because we are able to pay our debts and like our neighbors uh, Tanzania and Uganda who are still considered a low a low income a, a, a low developed country who who can get either grants and or have their uh, uh, debts waived waived in case they failed they failed to uh, they failed to repay but because Kenyans we decided to go to get, to get into a middle income country uh, then uh, we have to pay our our debts, we have to pay our loans, we borrow them at, 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 uh, at, int, uh, at, at market, at commercial rates. So that is the situation where we are now finding ourselves where we are because uh, of some of those decisions we made uh, in the last three years. Remember, the uh, National Treasury uh, in the last five years went into a borrowing spree and in, not, in, turn, in no time we realized that uh, we had borrowed five trillion shillings on and on, on how to fill that uh, that uh, that hole uh, it is a, a, a matter that is of, of great concern we saw also this budget uh, the, the 2018-2019 budget is a 3.06 trillion budget where that money will come from nobody knows uh, kra is only able to can manage to, to generate one point eight uh, 1.7 trillion shillings if uh, if it goes if it pulls its socks so even as we talk now kra is struggling to um, uh, to, uh, to, to plug that hole. So it's something is a catch-22 situation. We've seen the government is trying to, uh, even the technical team that was uh, uh, mandated to look into that, uh, especially the now contentious VAT uh, levy is here to give us answers. But again, the president, these, uh, this morning, we expect maybe t at 10, uh, t from 10 or, or 11 thereabouts, the president will be addressing the nation on how to go about with that uh, VAT fuel levy, which has caused an uproar across the country. We've seen manufacturers saying that they are going to review the price of foodstuffs upwards which will hit uh, the common one ing hard we've seen also the fuel uh, the, f the, f the fuel has gone up and people are now paying heavily through co uh, through sort of transportation costs electricity maybe this after uh, this evening but we'll see we we'll receive communication from ERC, the Energy Regulation Commission, Regulation Commission, reviewing these, the, 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 the money that we pay through either fuel, uh, through fuel and electricity will, will shoot up. So it's something that Kenyans out there are looking at it and they'll still have to feel the pain uh, as, uh, as, 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 as the government tries to look into this particular matter. But again, I think the best way to go will be perhaps the government will have to come up with a supplementary budget and cut down that, maybe that cut down that three trillion shilling budget and come cut its coat according to its size so that maybe it either reviews it downwards to about 2.5 trillion shillings which it can maybe, maybe manage because also the concern is that uh, some projects are being entered into which are not uh, which are not really uh, which are not really uh, maybe worthwhile. The clerk yesterday asked why we should have a highway from uh, Mombasa to Nairobi when you have the SGR. So those are the concerns that are ongoing there. Uh, Belinda?